back. This is part number two. We're going to expand on our previous discussion about how to do these roads and rivers and such. Right now, <coughs> excuse me, right now we're concentrating on the roads. What we're looking at here is the beginnings of an intersection. All the pieces involved are exactly the same length. For now, we're using five inch, I'm sorry, five hexes in um, length and that is measured from flat to flat so five hexes one two I'm sorry one two three four five is the length of every road section we don't the objective here is to not change the size of the roads we're creating modular road system we don't want to have to cut even though they're foamies like I said before we don't want to have to go around cutting and shaping every time we need something we want to do this set once have the pieces cut once and then just try and use them for whatever battlefield we're creating. We're going to create an intersection. Let's begin with a T, a simple 90 degree T. So normally you would have your road section look like this and the other guy would come up and you'd have it like that. There's your T. But that, as you saw, as I pushed in this one and pushed in this one, now shortens the way that they, uh, uh, the way of the heck, the way the roads lay on the hexagons. So we can't pull them in just to make the T. We have to maintain these uh, road sections ending at the hex line. So as you can see, this is, see, it's straight. Well, we got an angle here. Well, let's ignore that for now. These sections, all of them are cut square. We're ending at the hex. They all technically are going to end at the hex. Any time you throw these roads around, they're going to be from end, or I'm sorry, edge of the one hex to where it ends, and edge uh, end of the other hex. So they're square. They're not angled yet. So let's create a simple T. Well, very simple. Using a piece of cardboard as a template, there's our T. Okay. Now we're going to make an intersection. There's our intersection. A square, simple, straightforward intersection. That's how that works. Now, let's, as you can imagine now, we can go into a million permutations of this type of template. Let's go to a situation where we want to have, or we've run into a situation where, we want to have one of the roads shoot off at an angle. Well, obviously we can make several different angles, and if the hex is one, two, three, four, five, six, we've got six angles we can cut. So let's take this away. We're going to make an angle coming off of a T. Okay, again, start with the T shape. There we are. And now we're going to make one of these roads shoot off at an angle. Take this away. We'll put in our T that has uh, an angle. So there's the same thing. Okay. But this guy is going to shoot off at an angle. Boom. Okay. If obviously we wanted him to shoot off at a sharper angle, we would make a template that would do it like this. See the line here where I was talking about splitting the hex? Misnomer, no doubt. But you get the idea. These lines we want to follow. So this one fills the hex as normal. But this one we want to come off. And I don't think I've made this one actually yet. But this would be another one we would probably make. We're going to follow this line right here. So we would want this to go like that. Okay, without, again, without cutting, without changing the shape of the end of the road, we want to leave it at its length of five hexes, but we want to adapt to make this a really sharp angle. So we'll have to cut a shape that does exactly that. So you can see here, we're going to need a T-shape that has an angle that's inverted. Like you see this here, or actually there's an angle here. And the next angle is going to be coming off even sharper. Now you, you could say that with an angled piece, I might be able to, let me see if I can reach for one. We could do it like that. So if I had an angled piece... There we have our road coming off like that at a sharp angle. But that implies I need to cut angled pieces. What if I don't want to do that? I want all my road sections to be flat. 
Well, and that would mean in order to accomplish this angle matching up the way it is, okay, I would need to have this intersection, this fork, cut to accommodate the length. Let's go back to our length. So now I need to create a piece, if I can get this right, that shoots off like that. We would probably want it to shoot off like this, but that would be a crazy shape to cut. So let's leave our little piece the way it is and simply make one that follows that line and matches up to that guy. So we would need a piece that looks like, and this is where we have to do a little bit of trial and error. So we want to match that up without changing again, without changing this piece, we want to match it up. So this guy would have to have a shape that marries up to him. So let's just do that and I'll show you how we did it. Just use a piece of paper, cardboard, we're going to copy this piece and then trace out what we believe would be the correct shape. So let's take our piece. Copy it out just as it is. Now again, there's probably going to be a million permutations of this. Okay, so there's our original piece. But now we already know that that's not going to quite suffice. So let's just kind of put that on there without doing any heavy calculations. Okay. Kind of get that guy in there correct. So far the length is correct. We want this guy to shoot off like this. Again, we don't want to change his length. We want to keep the length the same at all, t at all times. So this piece here has to shoot off at an angle like this. So instead of leaving this line intact, we'll probably just create a piece that does this. Well, maybe we do want to. See, that's where you have to decide. Maybe we do want to keep this line and simply create this extra angle here to accommodate this guy coming in. So again, you can see that we can do this a million ways to Sunday, but that's the idea. So let's go cut that. It only takes a minute. Okay, we're back. So now remember what this does is this allows us to not change the flats of these road sections. So let's put them in place just like the other guy. Just like the other guy matched up. Everything should be, you can see how the math is coming out. There's a certain degree of mathematical computation you could do to get this, even on a computer, get this correct. And that's what would appear to be the answer. We won't know until, of course, we carry on down the road here uh, with more angles and measurements to make sure that I've got that mathematics correct. And this angle cutting right here might have to be different uh, based on what the results are down there. So there we go. He's following the, well, actually it's like this, isn't it? I think I screwed up. Yeah, we want to follow that line. So here we go. Here we go. All right. So there you can see what really wants to happen is I did screw up. And that's why we're doing this, to show you 
what's involved. So this guy, we want to match up like that. Let's just go ahead and draw that line. Sorry if you can't see this. Okay. And then we're going to carry this directly like that should be sufficient. So there's our road following the edges and we're going to cut this like that. So as you can very well imagine, that's kind of it's going to be a bizarre looking piece, but a, like I said, seeing as we're cutting these out of foamies, they're a dime a dozen, so why not cut to your heart's content? So that you have pieces in your inventory that you can just draw on, you can tap into to create as many as you need. Once you've got them made, you don't have to make them again. So there we go. We'll zoom that out. So there's your, what appears to be an odd angle coming off of a T intersection or a, a fork in the road. And again, you can imagine if the, role, if the situation was reversed, if the direction would just flip the template, template over. So you can flip the template over once it's cut out of these foamies. This is cardboard. We're going to cut it out of foamies when we're done here. And again, you want to do it upside down, you just flip the template over or flip over the piece of uh, foamy. And there's your same thing. Now the road is following this line of the hexes. And we're keeping up with our, well, it should be. Our math is going to be off a little bit. More like our cutting is off a little bit. But that's the idea. Let's just take this. Match these up. Actually, it's probably close. Uh, anyway, you get the idea. That's how you would be able to do it. Okay? That's probably... Actually, you know what? That's all right. Our cutting is good. So this is how that would work. Okay? That's how you make... Now, this could be a strange intersection. Like we said, some place like Gettysburg where they had weird intersections. Roads all coming together from all over the place. It's been cut. You don't have to do it again. Now you can just imagine, take this and just replicate this weird angle over here, over there. And then make a hundred of these. I mean, uh, make a different, seven or eight different variations of this. Cut them all out of foamies and you get an instant uh, inventory to select from. So again, then once you're done with these, you can scan these shapes and put it in the computer. Now, once you got it in the computer, then you can really go to town and plan out your maps. So, let's, uh, here's an example. Here's that guy we cut. Strange dude, but sometimes will be needed. Kind of a normal one there. Here's another one. Here's the inverted version of that. Here's another variation on that. Okay, and here's yet another version of that intersection or fork right here. Here's the familiar one that we had. Okay, and then here's a variation on that theme. Right, and here's the variation on that theme and so on and so forth. So you can see we've got, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then our old T guy, he's back. We've got ten shapes. Now you make three or four copies of each one of these in the foamies and you're done. You shouldn't need any more than that and you're done. You could just absolutely go crazy. Then if you need something special, you've got the cardboard templates, you can cut them on the spot. Especially at a convention. Just go ahead and cut them out. Same goes with the rivers, which is what we'll do next. 
And to show you where we're going with the rivers, here's an example right here. This is the S curves. This could also be for a road, by the way. So you see how, in this example, we've got our hexes right here. The curve, this S, this is half of an S. You could call this a, uh, an S, but it's a even lazier. Okay, we're matching up the center of the hex and the center of the hex right there on those ends. So we've made a curve and a curve. Obviously, the half of that is a curve itself. Take that away, and you've got that kind of a curve. So two of these together, and you've got that kind of a curve. That's how it works. So this cut in half becomes two curves like this. These two curves coming together, one there, and then one there. The math, again, remember I talked about the tracing is off a little bit. But you can always fudge that. Okay, so there you go. You've got your curve. And if you want to make an even sharper curve, there you go. And you can make a complete circle. Okay? So the river could go like this, or the road could go like that completely, which is something you might see in Europe. Especially if you had to encounter something on a hill, or you're on a, like in Italy or something. Uh, so here we go again. Right? And then we're coming off like this. You'll notice it's supposed to be the same width. Here's the road. Okay, here goes the road. Now we've got a nice curve. We don't have to go to our, where'd he go? This guy. Okay, this looks a little nicer. So we could cut that out of brown, tan, for a road. It's meant for a river, but that's okay. You could do it like this as well. It just looks nicer to have a more realistic curve in there. Okay, so then we can do it. Here we go again. Let's do this. Let's do, we're going to put our road section in there. And now we've got kind of a lazy thing going on where the road is now shifted a little bit. So now the road's over here like that. The road's shifted. Maybe there's a hill or a, or a building or a house in here or a rock formation that made the, the, uh, the builders of the road or the natural inclination of the people when they're in their transports had to, they did it this way, this, this becomes a road by default. That's essentially how roads, you know, as you know, all began. Indian trails and so on. There must be something in the way that caused that to happen. Maybe there's a river right here. So that's the idea. Now you're done. You can just cut, 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 and you can have a huge inventory. Now, the other question I wanted to uh, say before, the other thing I wanted to address before we signed off was the fact that why did I use five? No particular reason. Okay, it could be four, could be three, could be two. Five is just what I chose. Four is probably going to be more like it. So, two hexes right here length, three hexes, four hexes, and five hexes. More than likely, um, the three is going to be the more common, especially in the, uh, in the North American area. You might have a three length of road because it's going to change. I mean, um, it's going to run into things that's going to make that road a lot of crazy turning and stuff uh, for a lot of reasons.